Good morning, everyone. I am so excited to see such a large crowd here today. Um, I have a couple questions for you first. First of all, raise your hand if you're a gardener. Raise your hand if you have native plants in your garden. <laughs> now raise your hand if you've ever heard of or done what you're sowing. Ah, okay. Much fewer hands went up. Um, I'm going to present to you quickly in the um, interest of time a presentation that I did with the Charles County Master Gardeners on all the dirt on winter sowing. The Charles County Master Gardeners are part of the University of Maryland Extension Service under the College of Agriculture and Natural Resources. So what is winter sowing? A lot of you haven't heard of that. Winter sowing is defined by the USDA as a propagation method used throughout the winter where temperate climate seeds are sown into vented containers and placed outdoors to foster naturally timed, high percentage germination of climate tolerant seedlings. That's a mouthful. In simpler terms, it's an incredibly easy way to grow seedlings in the middle of winter. You plant seeds in a container with a hole in the top, holes in the bottom for drainage, and wait for them to sprout. Winter sowing, as it's defined by the USDA, was coined in 2000 by an individual named Trudy Davidoff on GardenWeb.org. And since introducing the method, she has moved all of her information to a Facebook group called Winter Sowers. So you may have lots of questions today during and after the presentation. I'm happy to answer them later. Um, but this Winter Sowers group on Facebook is a wonderful resource. And Trudy basically started the method because she had lived in a small cottage in Long Island, New York. Um, didn't have a lot of room inside to start plants, so she experimented with the method outside, putting seeds in a foil lasagna pan that she covered with holes in it, drainage holes in the bottom, and she was amazed at the germination rate. So you might ask yourself, why one or so? For years, people have simply um, thrown seeds on the ground, grown seeds inside. Well, you'll find, hopefully through this presentation, winter sowing is very easy. So easy that even children can do it. It's fun. You can get your hands into soil in the middle of winter. You can't necessarily get out in your yard. It's inexpensive and environmentally friendly. Trudy based her whole concept on recycling of materials rather than going out and buying new stuff. There are no hard and fast rules. Once you learn the basic premise of it, you adapt it to suit your own needs. It produces strong, healthy plants. One of the things that has been found is that the root systems on winter sown plants are very healthy and they adapt very well to going from the container into the ground. You can grow unusual plants that you can't find in a nursery. Many of you maybe um, have seed catalogs and buy seeds in the winter months. Well, you can definitely um, put your seeds into winter sowing containers and grow a lot more than what you might be able to find locally. Other reasons to winter sow. It protects the seeds themselves. So the seeds aren't going to necessarily be eaten by critters. That might happen if you have them sown directly in your um, gardens. It eliminates the competition from weeds. How many times do you go out in the garden as things start to come up in the springtime and wonder, is that a weed or is that something I intentionally planted? It eliminates that confusion. It provides natural stratification. A lot of our plants, especially the native plants, require a period of cold, moist exposure in the winter time. They need to go through those freezing temperatures in order for the seed coat to break down. This method provides that naturally. It eliminates the need for hardening off plants that you have to do when you grow them inside. Reduces the need for watering. Once you set up your moist um, environment in that enclosed container, um, pretty much self-waters itself. It's also exposed to the winter elements of the snow and the rain. What can you winter sow? You can winter sow almost any, or I should say any temperate climate seed. You can't winter sow tropical seeds, and you can't winter sow things like your bulbs and your corms and your tubers. Um, it's a great process for native plants, and you'll see an example of that later um, in the slides. Other perennials, 
your herbs, your annuals, vegetables. Now that you know what it is and why you might want to do it, and you know what seeds you can do, when might when do you winter sow? Um, winter sowing happens in the winter months. That's why it's called winter sowing. Now, some people might say, well, is that from the 1st of December through the end of February? Because that's one way we define winter. Others, may, others, especially Trudy, says it's from the winter solstice until your spring equinox. So basically like December 21st to about March 21st. In the early months of the winter, you want to do your plants that require cold stratification. Again, those are your natives, some of your natives, some of your other perennials. Um, native grasses, vines, and trees, you probably want to start in the dead of winter. You can start your cold weather vegetables, like your spinach, kale, Brussels sprouts. Herbs do really well started in the middle of winter, and your hardy annuals. Just because you may, because you may have so many plants or seeds that you want to start, I typically start, like I said, with those that were on the previous slide. Once I finish those, later on, like in February, March, I move into the things like the tender annuals, the vegetables, and the herbs. But you'll find this is not a, um, a schedule that you have to abide by. Trudy would say that any plant that you put in a container in winter is smart enough to know when to awaken in the spring because it knows that based on your day length, as your days get longer, more sunlight, and it knows it based on the temperature of the soil. So don't think your plants are gonna sprout too early because they're going to know when to come out of that dormancy. And then I save till the last part of the um, season, which I actually do in March, things like my warm weather crops of tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, pumpkin, squash, you name it. Anything you can grow in your vegetable garden, you can start with winter sowing. So what do you need to winter sow? Um, the materials are pretty simple, pretty basic. You need containers. Uh, I wanted to show you a few examples of containers. You can use anything that's basically clear or translucent. This is an example of something clear. It's just a couple of beverage cups taped together. Holes in the bottom, holes in the top. You want to make sure your container can accommodate at least three to four inches of soil, especially for native plants, because native plants can develop deep roots, especially if you don't plant them out um, very soon in the process. Another type of container that works well, which is what this is based on, are milk jugs. Milk jugs, although they're not clear, this is considered translucent. It still lets light through. If you can hold it up to light and see your hand through it, it's the perfect container for winter sowing. Another example, this is a bleach bottle. This is opaque, light can't get through it. Doesn't mean you can't use it for winter sowing, but you might have to adapt it. Some people would cut a window in the front of it, and with that window it would let in light, so you could use it. Some people would take the whole top off, use the bottom and cover it like with a piece of plastic, like saran wrap or a baggie with holes in it. That'll work too. But you'll see there are lots of options for containers, and I have a whole box um, over on the table that you're welcome to come look at during a break. You need potting mix. The important thing about potting mix is that it's basically you use a potting mix or a seed starting mix. You don't want to use soil out of your garden. It's too dense, and it won't drain well. So um, my preference is a potting mix that I can get from the Amish here locally. It's a large bale of dry mix that I get lots of containers out of. Um, it has a starter fertilizer in it, so that I don't have to worry about getting my seeds out of the containers once they germinate. Seeds in themselves have the nutrients they need to sprout and to get to that first set of true leaves. They don't have enough nutrients to get them beyond that. So once your seeds germinate, it's good if your um, seed, if your potting mix has some sort of starter fertilizer in it, or if you think about putting a dilute fertilizer on them. The classic way for winter sowing, you need tape to seal it and to label it. You need a marker for labeling. Um, if you're going to mark on the outside of the containers, you need something that's UV resistant. I've started using a grease pencil. I find that that works easily. Um, Trudy's tried and true way is to use um, a permanent marker on a piece of duct tape and put it on the bottom of the jug. 
but that's kind of difficult if you plant lots of jugs to you know, pick them up and look and see what's in there. So a lot of folks um, label the containers themselves on the outside. You need scissors or a sharp knife to prepare your containers. Of course, you need your seeds and water, and you need a lot of patience while you wait for the seeds to germinate. You may also find it helpful to have a bucket or container to mix your medium and your water. Um, plant tags for inside the jugs. I do also put a label inside my jugs in case the outside labeling fails. I put a coffee filter in the bottom of my jugs because I do have a problem with slugs. The coffee filter will keep the soil in and keep the slugs out, but it's not mandatory. And a lot of the soils will recommend that you use gloves when you're handling the soil, um, trowel to put your soil in the jugs, and then um, I use a drill for um, putting the holes in my containers, but I have to confess, I don't do the drill, my husband does it for me. I've converted my husband to being a winter sower. So we've broken the, um, the process into 10 simple steps, and I'll actually pass some of these around so you can see them as I'm talking. And again, there are no hard and fast rules, but this is just so when we did our presentation, we kind of stayed on track with what we were talking about. You can kind of look at those while I'm talking. Um, first, you want to collect and wash your containers. Um, there's nothing special, rinsing them. Um, maybe with a little soap and water. They don't have to be bleached. It's not important that these things be sterile like when you start plants inside. You want to cut drain holes in the bottom. Again, I use a drill for that. Um, you can also just use a sharp knife. Some people use like a soldering iron or a wood burning tool. Um, additional container prep. If you're going to use something that is not translucent or transparent, you might want to create a window for the sun. This is a butter tub that light can't get through. But if you cut a hole in the top and leave enough material around the rim, you can put that lid back on with a piece of saran wrap or other plastic. And then you can use this. This would be fine for winter sewing. Perfect depth. You let light in. You want to prepare your labels. I can't stress that enough. You'll probably hear me say that more than one time. Add the potting mix and water thoroughly. Plant your seeds. Seal the container. And then we'll talk about care of your jugs, opening in the spring on warm days, and transplanting. Again, I've pretty much talked about the containers. Use your imagination. If, if it can receive light, and if you can put the holes in it for um, the winter elements to get in and the water to get out, it's fine. Again, cut the drain holes in the bottom. I already talked about the additional container prep if you have something that doesn't let the light in. Labels, again, I can't stress it enough. Truly recommend you label the bottom of the jug. I put a plant tag inside my jug. And then if you're going to label the um, outside of the jug, please use something that's not going to wear off. A permanent marker will wear off. So I recommend a grease pencil. Some people use nail polish, paint pens, lots of options. You want to add your potting mix and wet thoroughly. I always mix my dry mix in a bucket or some sort of tub before I put it in the container make sure it's nice and moist. Add, like I said, three to four inches of potting mix. If you're planting native plants or perennials, you definitely need that depth. You want to make sure you tap the container or damp, tamp on the soil to um, settle it. And make sure you water it and that water is draining out the bottom. This is my colleague Molly. She and I did this presentation together. This is her setup. She actually likes to combine her um, four pots of the potting medium with a part of vermiculite. Um, putting your seeds in. It's recommended that you only do one type of seed at a time. I may mix two varieties of tomatoes just because I don't need a whole um, like milk jug full of tomato plants, so I may do half of it with one variety and half with another. But stick with similar varieties. They're going to sprout at the same time and hopefully grow to the same height. Again, mark your containers. Um, for really tiny seeds, you can just sprinkle them on the soil. I just sprinkle with my fingers. Some people prefer that they mix with sand to kind of cut the amount of seeds that they would be putting in once they sprinkle the sand. 
Again, like anything else in winter sowing, it's a personal choice. For larger seeds, you may want to follow the instructions on the packet for the planting depth, especially, you know, depending on the size of the seeds. The larger the seed, the deeper it probably needs to be. Um, information on planting depth can be found on seed packets if you order seeds. You can go to online resources. A popular one for winter sowers is Prairie Moon. And that only gives you things like planting depth, but it also talks about cold stratification if you have native seeds and you're not sure if they need how much time they need in the soil. And oh, the timing on the seed packets, that's pretty much for your indoor germination. So don't worry about the timing on the seed packets. That's one thing you can ignore. And this is an example just of showing the one on the right shows where seeds were just sprinkled on. So you get a heavy, dense um, mat. And on the left, it shows where they were individually spaced. If they're individually spaced, you can easily take you know, plant by plant out and pop it in your garden. When they're in mass, like the ones on the right, it's recommended that you maybe cut them brownie style, like take the whole um, soil clump out of the container, take a really sharp knife, cut it into smaller sections, and then plant those sections in the ground. It doesn't matter if you plant a lot of them together, Mother Nature knows best, and the strongest will survive. So it's a matter of preference how you put your seeds in the container. And then you seal your containers with tape. Um, some people just bring the two, um, bring the lid, bring the lid of the um, milk jug back down, and some of them tie it like with pipe cleaners. They put holes in the top and holes in the bottom and tie it with pipe cleaners. I found an easy way where if I put a slit in the top section, it will like rest down into the bottom, and I don't even really need to tape it, except maybe putting one piece of tape on the front to keep it um, secure. Let's see if I can get that done. Something like that. The top will nest into the bottom, and you can just put a single piece of tape. And then once you seal them, you want to put them in outside where they're exposed to the elements. Um, you don't want them under the eave of a house. You want to make sure they're somewhere where they'll get the rain and the snow. It really doesn't matter if it's sun or shade. Some people put them on the northern side of the house in the shade. Some people put them in the sun. It's personal preference. Again, the length of the day, even if it's on the, in the shade of the front of the house, daylight is getting longer, and the seeds will recognize that. Um, and the soil will warm up wherever it's put. So again, those are the, some of the critical things. As long as they're moist enough, um, the length of the day and the temperature of the soil is going to determine when they germinate. You can't hurry the seeds. This isn't a way to start plants early. So don't think you're going to get a jump start on your garden. It's not a way to jump start. It's just a way to germinate plants at a higher rate without losing them to the other things like your um, squirrels and your gophers and other things that are tending to get your seeds in the ground. Let's see. If you're using the milk jugs or anything else that has a cap, don't put the cap on it. Again, you need those um, jugs to be able to ventilate because they will get hot as the temperatures warm up in the um, springtime and you want the air to come out. You also want the snow and the rain to get in. You want to place them in a protected area so that they don't get knocked over. Again, sun or part shade, doesn't matter. What you do want to do is monitor the dampness. You'll notice when you plant um, your container, you'll get used to the weight of the jug when the soil is damp. If you find that there's no condensation in your jug, which it will develop condensation as it heats up, um, if you find there's no condensation or the weight of it starts to get really light, then you want to consider watering your jugs. You could set them in a pan of water and bottom water them because the soil will act like a sponge and soak it up. Or you can use a mister or something to um, put water in through the um, top of the jug. If it becomes too damp and you see that a green tinge is forming on the top of the soil, you may want to open it because it could be that it's too moist and it's allowing algae to grow. It won't hurt your plants. Some people just think it's unsightly. So you may want to just open them and let it breathe for a little bit and then close them back up. You could also put more vent holes in the top. Once your um, seeds germinate, what do you do? 
Well, once they develop one to two sets of true leaves, the first set of leaves are not the true leaves. A lot of plants look the same when their first sets of leaves come out. Um, once they develop true leaves and they look like the plant that you're expecting, you can open them up and any time after that consider putting them in your garden. If there's an unexpected warm cell after they germinate, you definitely want to make sure you open them up and remove them to shade because that heat can kill your seedlings very quickly. I don't move mine. Mine were fine all last year in the spots I chose and I put mine in a, I guess it gets part sun, part shade on the southern side of my house and they did fine. Um, if there's an unexpected cold spell after germination, some people feel that because the seeds have sprouted, those um, little seedlings are going to be um, prone to maybe um, freezing if we get a frost, but they're in that protective environment, sort of like a cloche in a garden. They're not going to freeze as quickly as something that's not covered, um, but some folks, once they see green, they think they should cover it with blankets or um, sheets or something to give it that extra protection. It's really not necessary. If those seeds know it was time to sprout, then their um, foliage is probably strong enough to withstand a night of um, frost or freezing temps here and there. This is one of Molly's pictures of some of her natives that had germinated and when she opened the um, container she was surprised to find a little frog inside. I don't know if you can see that. So don't be surprised. Things can get into your containers. It's part of nature. Um, so now um, it's time to transplant your seedlings. I've already said you can transplant them when there are at least two sets of true leaves. Some people like to let them grow in the containers longer. That's fine too. You just may need to fertilize them. Um, you want to open the containers for a couple days to allow them to acclimate. That's more, more because you want to expose them and maybe put them in the area where you're going to plant them. That exposes them to the sunlight that they're going to be in and to the winds because they've been protected from the wind all this time. You can pull the individual plants apart gently. Um, the roots are fragile, but they're not as fragile as plants grown inside, so don't feel like you have to be real careful with them. Use a sharp knife for hunk of seedlings um, if you want to plant them brownie style. And you want to water them thoroughly, just like any transplant. In fact, it's easier if you water them before you take them out of the container and let them drain. It makes the soil easier to work with, and then water them really well once you put them in the ground. Could you repeat that uh, part from our previous slide about what happens if you get a cold snap after? Uh, so if you get a cold snap, your seedlings knew it was time for them to germinate, and now you've got this green growth. Some people think that because they've got the growth, that growth might be susceptible to freezing or frost. But if they've um, germinated like now, in this type of weather, you're only going to have things like your hardy um, perennials or your annuals, hardy annuals germinating and or your cold season vegetables. Like I winter, I've been winter sowing since January 1st and the only thing that has sprouted now are my cold crops like lettuce, arugula, spinach that I maybe put in the beginning of February. So they know nothing else has germinated. A few natives have germinated but they all know when the time is right. So their foliage, the foliage of like your cool weather crops and your natives are more accustomed to these cooler temps. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to dwell on this story about tomatoes, although it's my pride and joy from last year, but this is a native plant shop, so, so I'm going to go through that. This, this presentation is on the Charles County Master Gardener website. So um, if you look under, do a Google search for Charles County Master Gardeners and go under our resource page, it's under our Master Gardener videos. You'll find both a recorded presentation that my colleague and I did back in November, and you'll also find the slide deck there. But this is Molly's, um, these are Molly's pictures. Molly winter sowed for wildlife, for the native plants. Um, and she had an exceptional crop of cardinal flower and when Molly did the math, she figured she got more than 60 plants, which if they were estimated to be $6.50, say, a uh, quart at a native plant nursery, she would have spent $390, and she spent $3 on a package of seeds. So you can see it's a very economical way to start native plants. Um, it's not to take away from any of the other um, 
ways you can get native plants, whether it be the plugs or whether you get them from division from friends or you go to the nurseries and get the quarts and the gallons. Again, it's like everything else with gardening. It's personal choice, the economics of things for some of us. Um, so once I found my joy of native plants, which I was introduced to from master gardener plant sales and from fellow master gardeners who gifted me with plants, and then I found plugs at Butterfly Alley. Then my next thing was I found this Winter Sowers Facebook group last year. I attended Butterfly Alley's um, seed swap in the fall and then their winter sowing um, thing in the fall, which I have hundreds now of native plant varieties that I'm trying to grow through winter sowing. And it's becoming quite successful. Our presentation has all the resources that we used um, when we put it together. We used a lot of information from Trudy's Winter Sowers Facebook group. Um, there was also a very good winter sowing presentation done by another extension um, service. That was by Dolly Foster. So if you look on YouTube for anything from Dolly Foster, she has since done a more recent winter sowing um, presentation. These were other references we used. The um, graphic that we used for the 10 steps and that I passed around, that was used courtesy of Skycrest Studios. Always want to put out the plug for the people who are providing the information. And the photos used in the presentation were courtesy of Molly and I. And you'll hear not only from us, but from the other Master Gardener presenters, lots of information on the UME, University of Maryland Extension resource page. Feel free to go there for information. And the Master Gardeners, we have six basic um, programs under us, our plant clinics, grow it, eat it programs, baywise, pollinators, composting, and again here when everybody was here for the native plants. And again, brought to you by Charles County Master Gardeners. Caitlin Bellagush is our Charles County Coordinator and she's here today. I'm sure she'd be happy to answer any questions you have. And with that, I'd like to see a show of hands of who may try winter sowing now that they've seen this presentation. All right, I got the word across. That's what I'm happy about. Now, in the interest of time, I couldn't stand here and do a demo in the time we were allotted and with the crowd that we have. But I have supplies here for a limited number of individuals if you'd like to sow something to take home with you today. We have the materials for the containers, the soil. We have some select native plant seeds. So I will be around during lunch and breaks. If anybody wants to stay afterwards, um, by all means, we'd like to get some more native seeds in containers and in the ground. Question. Mm -hmm. The result of these seedlings, are they more hardy than if you started it with a Yes, so what you'll find, you don't have the expense of all those indoor things like your racks, your lights, your mats, your seed trays. The things you don't have also, you don't have the problems with um, damping off that occasionally happens with plants that are um, seeded inside and you don't have to worry about hardening them off. They do have stronger roots. What I have seen and other master gardeners can attest to is that your winter sown seed, it's not going to give you a jump on gardening, so don't think about that. It's going to give you the stronger plants. So I have seen winter sown seedlings like this go into a grow and eat a garden next to a hothouse tomato that looked like this with a tomato on it. And those winter sown seedlings, after a few weeks in the ground, far surpassed that greenhouse plant and grew huge. Um, if you look at the pictures in this um, presentation for the tomatoes, my husband's 6'3", and they were taller than him. We were staking them. We were doing a Florida weave um, on bamboo stakes, and they just outgrew the stakes, and we had to top them off. Very hardy plants. Yes, ma'am? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have a whole month left of winter. Okay, we have a whole month. You can do anything vegetable-wise. I don't know of any vegetable that needs cold stratification. The, the timing is more for your plants that need that cold stratification, if you're familiar with that. So if you have a native plant that requires 90 days cold stratification, 
you want that sown in December or January. Because if you sow that now, it's not going to get the cold treatment it needs. So that's the only reason we present a schedule, not to say you have to go by this. But um, there's, and there's also spring sowing and summer sowing. It's called winter sowing because you do it during those three months of winter, but you can still sow in containers in the spring and in the summer, and on Trudy's website, she talks about all those things. Lots of great information there. Yes, ma'am. Um, I have seeds in my refrigerator for me to see. So mm -hmm. if I plant them out, it'll be considered stratified. Right. If you've done your treatment of stratification in the refrigerator, you could put them in containers and they should grow fine. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? <laughs> Come in again, we'll be around for the rest of the afternoon. We're not going anywhere. So anybody who'd like to maybe try their hand at it or just take some seeds with you. Um, Feel free. Thank you.